Okay, so if you follow me on the social medias, you may know that I'm actually working on a new piece of cyberpunk inspired art. And when creating this, I found a picture that I wanted to use for my subject. I also found some clothing and I was able to use the puppet warp tool in Photoshop to map the clothing to the subject. It was by far the best use of that tool I've, I've ever done in Photoshop. And I had to show you this and I don't think I've done a video on the Puppet Warp tool yet. So like I had to show you this in a video and I'm gonna show you how I did it in this tutorial. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use the Puppet Warp tool to warp one object to match another. This. I'm really proud of this. If you can't tell, I'm really, really excited to show you this. So we'll jump to the screen now and get started. Okay, so we're now in Photoshop. You can see the image of the subject that I had. I thought this would be really cool. I was gonna remove the microphone stand and replace that with some kind of cool weapon. The pose just seemed pretty casual, but I wasn't really feeling what she's wearing, unfortunately. However, I did manage to find this image on Adobe Stock as well of like a really cool uniform that I could then use as a basis and really cyberpunk this up. So when matching two images together, you have like the lighting and the color. These are things you've got to consider because they're, they're most likely shot under different lighting conditions. You might have a really warm image, a cool image. One might be darker, one might be lighter and you've got to balance them together. However, when you want to map like an entirely different object to fit something else, it's either in most cases gonna work or it's not, it's very difficult to like fudge that together. So in this example here, you can see I have the subject, she's like to the side, but her body is face on. And the clothing that I want to map to her is actually face on as well. So it works in this example. So you can see I've got the clothing here. So what I'm gonna do is go up to select, down to subject, do a really, really lazy cutout you can see it does a pretty good job. I don't need this to be super accurate. I might just, oh, we've lost part of the shoes. I'll see if I can just grab that quickly with quick select. For the most part, there we go. Please do spend much longer doing this for your one. In fact, you could even use the pen tool and get like a perfect clean cutout if you want. Okay, so I've done my selection. What I'm gonna do now is just add a layer mask and then right click and select convert to smart object. And the great thing about smart objects, if I haven't sold you on smart objects before, is you can double click them, go inside. You've still got that mask there, so you can always go and refine this, save, close, and then come back out. It's like a document in a document. So I can call this clothing now. And now this is a smart object, there's a few other things I can do with it. So first of all, I'm gonna right click and duplicate layer. And we'll duplicate this into our other image. Click OK. And now we can close this down. And we've got this in here. So first of all, we need to match the size. So I'm just gonna go up here to edit, down to free transform. Just hold shift and scale it up. And I'm gonna nudge this over in position. So just try and get the size matching as best you can. So like things like shoulder width, arms, legs, all that good stuff. Okay, that's pretty good. So I'll double click to set that transformation. Now, the reason that we use smart objects again is because we're about to use the puppet warp tool. And if you do this to something that isn't a smart object, it's permanent. If it's a smart object, you can apply a puppet warp effect and then go back and edit it if you want. So let's go up to edit with our smart object selected and go down to puppet warp and you'll see this crazy grid appears. And if I just zoom in a little bit here, what we can do now is put down a few pins. So we'll put one on the neck. I think we'll do one there around the shoulders, one at the end of the arm, one kind of around the midsection, one on the hips, and then we'll go one, two on the thighs, a couple on the knees, it will do one on each ankle and then one towards the bottom of the feet. So we've put lots of pins. We've essentially puppet warped our image. And now this is the really cool bit. So we can actually click on the pin and drag it. Now you can make this go like, woo, 
all over the place. You can do some really quite bizarre things. And I'm just going to try and map this to the subject. Now you can see here it kind of bends. So I don't really want there to be a bend here. So I can actually click along the middle and just straighten that up. So you can kind of see how this works. Now, if you have difficulty selecting a particular point or it keeps creating new pins, just zoom in super close like this. It will make that selection easier. And you can actually click on certain pins with this icon and then just hit delete or backspace and it will remove the pin entirely. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna shuffle this into position. She's got like a little bit of a bend here. And I'm just gonna move this around. <laughs> you can see you can do some quite crazy things with this. Uh, we're gonna try not to distort her legs too much. And I'm gonna move this over here. Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting pose. So we'll move, move this over here. You can see you can have a lot of fun with this. I'll try and stay sensible in this tutorial. So she's got her legs crossed. So this is this is what I'm most proud of. I'm actually doing this the wrong way at the moment. So we'll, we'll bend this over here. <laughs> that is some crazy warp. And we're gonna cross those legs like so. And it does look a bit strange temporarily. And we're just gonna try and line this up as best we can without kind of like bending her legs in a, any unhuman kind of way. We're gonna try and keep this looking uh, legit. Okay, something like this. You can of course spend a lot longer on yours. There we go, move that around a little bit. So you can tinker with this. And as I said, what we can do now is press return to make those changes and set that transformation. And then we get that listed under here as puppet warp. Now we can click and drag this to the trash to delete it. We can turn it off and back on. You can see that's quite a considerable difference there. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. Well done. Well done, Dan. We can turn this back on and I'm actually gonna double click to go back inside, make a few changes here. You can see this one's gone a bit funny on the arm. I might just bring that, whoa, back a little bit. Just map that up to the shoulder. The neck was pretty tricky on this one. So I had to kind of add a few more points get this as close as I can. In fact, I think in the final version that I'm still working on, I did the neck as best I could. And then what I did was actually add a layer mask and manually remove parts of the clothing. So I did something like this and then you can kind of bend this down, stretch that out. So there we go, that's a pretty rough version. And as I say, in the final version, I kind of spent a bit more time doing this but that's pretty cool. So there we go, we got the legs as well. So if you'd like to know how I did the legs, I'll just show you really quickly. All I did was just right click and duplicate this layer. And I'll just call this leg fix. We'll hide the layer underneath. Now this leg is the one that is in front and at the moment it's behind. So what I need to do is just go back into this puppet warp and I need to get this leg here completely out the way. Oops, there you go. See, it's very easy to add pins if you don't zoom in. Press return. So now I just need this leg on its own. What I can do is I can hold down Alt or Option and add a layer mask. And by holding Alt or Option, it will hide everything by default. And then if I just grab white, that's my foreground color, and the brush tool, one of Photoshop's soft round pressure opacity brushes. And all I've got to do now is just brush in over this part, the part that kind of goes a little bit funny. And if I turn the other one back on, you can see it's just that one piece where I put that leg in front and I can, it goes a bit further up so I can actually brush this all the way up here like so. And then maybe I could just group these together Call this clothing. That's our original image. 
There we go, we've puppet warped that to match her body. There was, of course, a lot more work I did on top of this. But there we go. That's how awesome the puppet warp tool is. You can use this for so many things when you try and map one object to another. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and you enjoyed it. If you do have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.